Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how to have an NJ PLC communicate with a, a third party uh, PLC. In my case, I'm using a compact logics uh, from Rockwell uh, over Ethernet's IP uh, using explicit uh, messaging. So the idea is I have some, you know, some variables in this PLC that I want uh, to read and write from my NJ PLC. And that's what we're going to see uh, in this video. So the first thing I'm going to do, I am online right now with uh, the Rockwell PLC. And the IP address, as you can see, is 192.168.250.100. And I'm just going to create a variable to start with. So I'm going to call it test. And it's going to be a double integer, that's fine. And uh, by default, it's read write, so we don't want to change that so we can have access to read it and write to it from the NJ PLC. So that's about it we need to do uh, in this side. Now, on the NJ side, I'm just going to bring this window here. I'm going to open this uh, project. So, right now, uh, in this PLC, and open up a uh, section. So I have nothing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple ranks to be able to read from the compact logics and uh, write to it. So the functions I'm going to be using is the SIP class three functions. So I'm going to use SIP read for reading. So I'm just going to create here a contact and I'm going to call this a read command. And then I'm going to give my function block uh, instance and name. So I'm going to call it my read sip. And then I have to specify the route path. Now, in my case, as we saw, the IP address is 192.168.250.100. So the way to specify the route path is we have to specify the port first that Ethernet IPs can use. Typically, it's port 2. So that's what we have here as well. Uh, but sometimes, depending on the device you're dealing with, it might be different. But typically, uh, it should be port 2. So I'm going to specify the IP address. 50.100. Now this is a string variable, and that's why I have this uh, uh, symbols in here. But I could put uh, also uh, just like a variable and dynamically change this if I want. I could put a string variable and change it uh, if I want. But I don't need to for purpose of this uh, demo. So I'm just going to literally put the path. Uh, the timeout, so I'm going to specify it's an unsigned integer, so I'm going to literally specify that. It's going to be 20, which is 2 seconds, because the unit is 0.1 seconds. And then the source data, so that's the variable we created in the Rockwell PLC. So let's test. And then the size, because it's not an array, so it's going to be uh, 1. If it was an array, then we could specify the element we want to read of that array. And then I'm going to create a local variable. I'm going to call it test as well in here, asking me what type. It's going to have to be the same type, so it's double integer. I'm going to give it a comment. I'm not going to give it a comment for now. Also, this is also not bad to have, so we can see how many bytes uh, we received. So I'm going to create a variable called RSV size. And I'm going to make this variable test global so we can have it in the watch window. So that's for uh, basically the read command or the read logic, like very simple. And then I'm going to also add another wrong uh, below here for the right. So similar to what we did here, 
I'm going to have uh, normally open contact for the right command. And then I'm going to have uh, my function here. It's going to be sip. And so it's a message for right. And I'm going to call it my right sip. And then in the same way, we're going to specify the path. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to copy these, paste it here. Timeout will be the same. Or like we said, we could create uh, variables um, that we can specify in both cases. So they will be the same. And we can change them dynamically. And the size, again, it's one element. And then the source will be the same. So we want to write from this tag to this tag in other words. So that's about um, the code we need to, to do. We could also add some variables for errors and all that that you could use in your program. But for the uh, purpose of our demo, we're going to keep it uh, simple for, for now. So let's go online with this uh, PLC. Now the NJ PLC IP address is 192.168.250.2, as we can see from there. And I'm going to go and transfer to my PLC. Of course, you know, get into the stage assuming that we set up the IP addresses and both PLCs are you know hooked up to the switch and everything is is okay from communication size and can ping each other and all that good stuff. So I'll say yes. Okay. And uh, everything is looks okay now. We're live, we're online with uh, the PLC. So we're gonna see if we can read from the other PLC notes. I'm just gonna minimize this so we can see it. Do the same thing for this guy as well. All I need is to see the, the variable. There we go. Make it a little bit bigger here. So right now uh, in test the value is zero, so I'm gonna change it to something else so we can see if we are reading it in this PLC. So if I give the command true you can see uh, the command went through everything is good done and we're reading uh, the value of 10 and it's uh, four bytes because it's a double integer so now we're going to see if we can write to it so i'm going to change the value here to let's say 20 and in the same way i'm going to initial the command for writing say true and we can see here instantaneously uh, has changed to uh, so that's simply how you can basically read and write a variable from an NJ PLC to a, a third party uh, PLC over EIP using explicit messaging. In this case, it's a compact logic. So now, uh, let's say we want, uh, you know, we, let's say we have actually not just uh, simple variables here, but we have a structure. So let's say we have a structure here in, the, in this PLC and we want to read to it and write to it from uh, NJ PLC. So the way to do that, we're gonna first create a structure in the compact logic. So I'm just gonna maximize this so we can see what we're doing. So I'm gonna go to the user defined, and I'm gonna say new data type, and I'm gonna call it uh, my data. And then I'm going to add some members in here. So number one, um, I'll give it uh, perhaps the integer. <coughs> member two um, could be maybe an integer or some other data type. Number three, perhaps a real, for example. And I'll say apply. Okay, and then I'll go back to that same tag in here, I'll delete it, 
and then I will recreate it just this time with uh, the data type will be my data. So now we have three members in here. Uh, same here. That's where our uh, we can monitor. So now this side is, is good, ready to go. And we're going to mimic the same thing in uh, the NJ PLC. So I'll go offline first, and I'll go to the data type. And then I'll create the same structure. I'll call it my data and create number. So I'll say number one. And then another number, number two, and number three. So in here, I want this to be a double integer, this to be an integer. Needs to be real. And in the same way, uh, I'll change the data type of this test to my data. So in our logic, we don't have to change uh, anything in here. So I'll go online and uh, it's complaining because I have the variable here still then. So correct that. So now I add it again. That's good to go. Then I go online and uh, transfer my new configuration. So let's transfer the new configuration now. Say yes. Just downloading a couple of seconds. And yes, check is good. Okay, so now I'm going to minimize this so we can see both at the same time. Push this a little bit down, and I'll just put here the variable so we can see all the elements of that variable. Okay, so right now everything is, is zero. Uh, so I'm gonna move this a little bit. So. There we go. So I'll just put here uh, 10, I'll put uh, value 20, value uh, 1.5 for this variable. And then I'll see if I can read that structure. True is done, and I read my variables. Now notice here I didn't change also the size, so don't get confused. Although we have three members here of this structure, but it's still considered as one element, as one because it's just one uh, one structure, it's still considered as one uh, uh, one tag. Um, so now if we have an array of this structure, that's an array of four or five, then you will need to specify here uh, that you have four or five arrays you want to read from uh, from the other PLC. But if it's one, although you have, you know, few members in that structure, it's still considered as one because you're going to read that in one shot. So now we're going to see if we can write to it in the same way. So I'll put here like 30 from the NJ PLC, uh, perhaps 40, and 5.6 for instance. And we're going to see if we can uh, write to the PLC. So I'll say true, it's done, and I can see my values, it's all in here. Uh, so that's basically uh, briefly how you can do explicit, use explicit messaging uh, over Ethernet IP and read and write from NJ to uh, a third party uh, PLC, in this case, it's a compact logics. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for. Uh, watching this video.